So early in 2014, Ken Ham had a debate with Bill Nye, the science guy. And in that, Ken Ham made some remarkable claims. As a creationist, I maintain that observational science actually confirms this model based on the Bible. Really? So observational science is going to confirm the biblical worldview? Oh dear, you must know by now, this is going to be fact-checked. And the results are going to be hilarious. So let's summarize the creationist model based on the Bible. By creation, we mean, here at Answers in Genesis and the the Creation Museum, we mean the account based on the Bible. Yes, I take Genesis as literal history, as Jesus did. When we look at that, what I call the seven seas of history that we walk people through here at the museum. That the universe was created about 6,000 years ago, and then about 4,000 years ago, there was Noah's flood, which caused this genetic bottleneck of the two to ten canids that got on the ark. Um, somewhat depending on whether you think that dogs are clean or unclean animals. As a creationist, I maintain that observational science actually confirms this model based on the Bible. Scientists working at the University of California stated this. We provide several lines of evidence supporting a single origin for dogs. And they put this diagram in the paper. By the way, that diagram is very, very similar to this diagram that creationists propose based upon the creation account in Genesis. <laughs> really, Ken, you sure about that? You really, really sure about that? Right. So firstly, what the hell's that on the left of the diagram? The golden jackal. Apparently, Noah's flood had no effect whatsoever on their population. That is, they were utterly impervious to God's attempts to destroy everything by a flood. Hmm. Maybe they had iron chariots, you know, like the ones the people from the plains used to defeat God. In Judges chapter 1, the Lord was with the men of Judah. They took possession of the hill country, but they were unable to drive the people from the plains because they had chariots fitted with iron. (laughs) Seriously, iron chariots can stop God in the Bible. So some might say that that alone would be enough to show that the Bible is wrong about Noah's flood. That is, the Bible is not inerrant. You see, it's quite simple to show that something's not inerrant, because you only have to show one error in it. But that would be too easy. There's more. You see, you might be wondering why all those lines are so broad in this scientific paper. Well, from the genetics, you can sort of get an estimate of the population size. Set your sides on laughter. Because it turns out that from the genetics, they say that this genetic bottleneck wasn't two canids, as it says in the Bible, but somewhere between two and 25,000. Again, Ken, I'm really not sure that that's compatible with the Bible. And then you start to realize Noah didn't need anywhere near the number of animals on the ark that people think he did. He didn't need all the species of dogs, only two. As a, as a creationist, I maintain that observational science actually confirms this model based on the Bible. Well, okay, maybe Noah wasn't that good at counting and maybe mistakenly took about 10,000 dogs on the ark instead of a couple. Or perhaps the pre-flood wolves were much cleverer and they decided to spend their times making really clever disguises so that they could get on the ark. You know, all the golden jackals were making their own flood evasion plans. Then, of course, there's the time scale. Ken thinks that all of this happened some 4,000 years ago, while the genetics say it happened some 15,000 years ago, with the divergence of these canids happening some 400,000 years ago. In fact, if you're wondering whether the diagram looks like this at all, it's actually fairly common. So let's say that I've got a favorable set of genes in a very large population of, I don't know, say 10,000 or something. And depending on the selective pressure and how quickly the animal reproduces, it will take many generations for those genes to propagate throughout the population. Meanwhile, if your population is very small, those favorable genes can spread throughout the whole population much more quickly. So you have this irony that large populations tend to change genetically only very slowly, and it's when the species is at its smallest, that is when it's closest to extinction, that you have the most potential for rapid changes in the gene pool. And this property of animal populations is one of the basic ideas behind punctuated equilibrium. Anyways, so getting back to Ken. In summary, just with the dogs, your biblical account is off by a factor of a thousand on the population size of the genetic bottleneck. 
the Bible got it right about biology. You're off by a factor of a hundred on the time scale. The Bible got it right about biology. Wow. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the minor point that the golden jackals were apparently impervious to Noah's flood. The Bible got it right about biology. Wow. <laughs> Because it really is the word of God. Now, you're getting more excited about being a Christian. But if you ignore all of the parts that are wholly inconsistent with the Bible, then the paltry scraps that you're left with, you're right. Don't contradict the Bible. Sadly, however, I'm not so sure that I or anyone else with a brain would find that terribly convincing. It would be kind of like saying London recently experienced some flooding. Now, sure, you've got to gloss over the fact that it was in the wrong location, that it was the wrong time, and that it was the wrong size. But the Bible speaks of a flood. There are cultures all over the world that have flood legends. I'm sure many of us have heard of the flood legends. The American Indians, the Fijians, the Hawaiians, Eskimos, the Australian Aborigines. Therefore, London's flooding proves that the Bible is correct about Noah's flood. But the amazing thing is, in reality, Ken Ham's position is almost that crazy. If there really was a global flood that covered the highest hills under the whole of heaven, as the Bible describes, you'd expect to find billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. And actually what we find are billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. I'm talking about the fossil record. And if there was a global flood, you'd expect to find billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. And you know what you find? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. Yeah, in order for Ken to make reality fit with the Bible, he's got to reduce the arguments to the level of fossils exist. Therefore, that confirms that the Bible was right about the global flood. You know, throwing out all those really quite important details, like we know all of these fossils weren't laid down in one flood, for the simple reason that you never find any of the modern animals fossilized with ancient ones, you know, things like dinosaurs. That is, you never find a bunny with a brontosaurus. You never find a swan with a stegosaurus. You never find a tiger with a tyrannosaur. And you never find an elephant with an ankylosaurus. And for that matter, you never find a dolphin with an ichthyosaur. Never. Not once. And the reason that Ken's got to ignore this is because it shows that the Bible is utterly inconsistent with reality. So he does what creationists always do under these circumstances. He simply ignores everything that disagrees and reduces his argument to this level. If there was a global flood, you'd expect to find billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. I had to say that because a lot of our supporters would want me to. And what do you find? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. A point that's just so callow, it's like saying the Bible says that Jonah lived inside a fish for a few days and science has shown that whales exist and they have stomachs. So science proves the accuracy of the Bible. The Bible got it right about biology. Wow. <laughs> because it really is the word of God. Now you're getting more excited about being a Christian. But seriously, the reason they have to throw out all of these critical details that we know about is for the simple reason that if you inspect those details, what you find is the Bible is simply inconsistent with reality. You know, like it does with this example of the Canada. By the way, that diagram is very, very similar to this diagram that creationists propose based upon the creation account in Genesis.